It is 10 16 in the morning. I am pulling out of my driveway on a Friday. I have escaped work today and I'm off to test out some new hiking and backpacking equipment. Today I'll be testing the ULA Catalyst. It's a three pound pack that holds about, I believe you could stuff about 70 liters in there if you had to. Uh, I've got it packed today with a winter loadout even though the temperatures are in the high 50s, low 60s today, which is unusual for January. I am in the Louisville, Kentucky area. I'll be doing a test hike today just south of that area in a location called Bernheim Forest. Uh, I'll just do a little five mile loop, take my time and enjoy being out in nature today. Kind of resetting from all the stress and activities that I have going on at the moment. See you there. Well, I almost forgot, but I need to make a quick stop running in the grocery store here. I noticed they had smart water bottles. Uh, I can't seem to find mine from the last trip, so I'm going to run in here and get a few and go ahead and pack the. I'm going to run in here and get a few and go ahead and pack the entire 4.4 pounds of water that I would normally carry on a trip, which is two liters. Be right back. Well, we're almost there, folks. Getting ready to turn into Bernheim Forest. And this forest isn't open all the time, as you can see by the gates. Um, looks like today it's five dollars to get in. Looks like today I have to be out of here by 5 p.m. So I need to get my little adventure started here. Oh, that's only on weekends and holidays that they charge. Any other time, you can just drive on in. It's a beautiful area, and it is an arboretum, if I'm saying that word correctly, meaning that they have all kinds of different trees preserved in this forest. Uh, some of these trees, and I'll put those in the footnotes of this video later, a good friend of mine works here as a volunteer and knows all about the place and he says that some of these trees you won't find anywhere else in this region except for in this forest and I'll put a listing of those after I talk to him and let you know what those are it's pretty cool but it's just a beautiful area uh, hopefully today since it's a weekday even though it's a Friday Hopefully there won't be many people back here and it'll be nice and quiet in the woods. Alright, here's the new pack guys. I'm going to wear it today for the first time, the ULA Catalyst. I've got a winter loadout packed in there uh, with some luxury items like my trusty Sven saw for cutting up firewood. Uh, so it's kind of luxury backpacking. Uh, it's still pretty lightweight. Total pack weight with two liters of water and four days of food comes to 27 pounds. And that's got about three to four pounds of luxury items I normally wouldn't carry in it. So still not too bad uh, for a very relaxing trip. But today's gonna be a test of the pack and of the Keen Targi Two Boots. Uh, these are replacing my old Salomons from last year. 
and uh, they're pretty light. These are pretty lightweight. They only weigh a pound, four ounces each, and I have huge feet. These are size 15s, uh, so footwear is pretty important to me, that it's comfortable and that it's not super heavy. Oh, before I forget, the smart water bottles. You may be thinking, what's the big deal about these things? Uh, the reason I like them, they're slender, so they fit in the side pockets of the pack really easily. And the biggest thing is the threading of the top here. If you take this top off, a Sawyer squeeze screws on there perfectly and doesn't leak, so you can drink straight out of the bottle. So, for example, you could refill this bottle in a stream or creek, screw on the Sawyer squeeze right here, just turn it up and drink straight from the bottle with no leaking. Uh, you may be thinking leaking's not a big deal. Uh, it is. If you've got dirty water in here, you wouldn't want to be holding this up to your mouth and squeezing it and having leakage occurring around this area running down the filter and into your mouth. You might as well drink out of the stream if you're going to do that. So anyway, that's the big deal about smart water bottles. And they, uh, the plastic's pretty decent on these. I've had these last a really long time. Uh, these are replacement bottles today because I couldn't find my other ones. I've stashed them away somewhere. Uh, so I'll see you on the trail. Here we go. Elm Look Trail is about a five mile loop according to the sign. And I have to be out of here at four o'clock and it is 11 o'clock now. So that gives me five hours. Plenty of time to do five miles. And uh, hopefully stop and have some lunch. We'll just have to see how the timing goes. And I think this trail has three water crossings. So uh, I'll just have to check that out as I go. Looks like the trail starts off as nothing more than a dirt path with some gravel on it. So I think we're on an old road for a little bit here. And we'll see where this leads. Well, I just passed a sign back there, a little disconcerting, disheartening if you will, I guess. Uh, I think I'm on an old fire road right now. And it had a sign pointing toward Elm Look Trail that said 3.3 miles. So if that's the case, I mean, I can't drive on this road. It's blocked off, they, they have a gate closed. Uh, if that's the case, I'm looking at 8.3 and uh, I won't have time to finish all that. Uh, so I may end up just walking on this old fire road, kind of testing things out. If I see some offshoot trails, uh, I will take those. Good news. I haven't come 3.3 miles, maybe about a half a mile. And I see the sign here heading off on the Elm Luck Trail. So cool. Get to get off this road and then deeper into the woods. Looking forward to it. As you can see, this is going to be a, a wet journey. We've had rain here for goodness almost 20 days straight on and off. Today is the first day it hasn't rained in I think nine days straight. And we got an inch of rain last night. So again, I'll have to see how this the uh, water crossings are on this trail. I did not bring my uh, camp shoes, which I usually use to do water crossings. If this is all I have to worry about in the way of water crossings, no worries, right? Pretty nice trail. Uh, not too difficult. Just kind of like a nice day to take a walk in the woods kind of trail. Interestingly enough, they even have it blazed. Too funny. I guess people have gotten lost back here before, I don't know. And not only do they have trail markers here, you can see 50 feet in the distance on the next tree, there's another one coming up on it right now. The white marker on the tree right there. and more in the distance. There's no way you can get lost. 
<laughs> Not to mention that the trail is pretty well beaten. So I can't imagine what the other trails are like in this forest that are more heavily traveled. Probably not very pristine. Oh, one thing to note that I was kind of poking fun at the trail markers and so forth. But uh, that aside, I mean, this is a great area. It's awesome. An awesome way to get out in the woods. I'm not going to walk through that. Uh, that is nothing, that's going to be nothing but pure muck. So let's take a slight trip around there through the briars. Yeah, that's mucky. Quick sandy almost. So around that we go. And back on the trail. This is so much fun, guys. I used to do this uh, when I was younger. Probably 25 plus years ago. <clears throat> and I'm just getting back into this as of last year. I'm 47 now. In fairly decent shape, packing a few too many pounds. But uh, I just really, I, I had forgotten how much I enjoy this. I don't know why I stopped, I guess life and kind of took over and got in the way or, or something. But anyway, I'm having a great time. This is just a day trip to test out some stuff, but uh, I'm having a ball out here. Well, so far the trail hasn't been very difficult, although it was listed as difficult on the sign at the trailhead. Uh, I think I'm a couple miles in and uh, so far I've been walking ridge lines, so it hasn't been too bad at all. Uh, a couple small hills, no big deal. Uh, I, I have broken a sweat, yes, but uh, it's about 62 degrees right now in January of all things. Uh, pretty unheard of. I think we're getting ready to uh, break a record for a consecutive number of days above freezing or something, uh, according to the meteorologist I watched on television the other night. Uh, but lots of fun today, man. Having a great time. Uh, about halfway point, I think I'm going to stop and do some lunch. I'm making good time. Should be able to get this thing knocked out well under time and get out of here before they close the gates. Uh, the friend of mine who is a, I think, conservator, uh, if that's the wrong word, I'll, I'll correct it later. He told me to stop at a place where there are twin silos. So that's somewhere where I'm guessing uh, there used to be a farm. Haven't made it there yet, so I'll keep on walking. Talk soon. <laughs> Man, I'm having a freaking ball out here. This is awesome. Oh, and one more thing. When I said it had been easy so far walking the ridge line, uh, the reason I stopped to make that short uh, video clip there was, uh, looks like it's looks like I'm getting ready to go down finally. I don't know if you can see just over the ridge there. Looks like I'm headed down into a valley, which means I'll have to come back up later. And the downhills are the hardest part for this uh, aging man. The knees take a beating on the downhills. I brought my Chopat knee braces with me in case I need them. Uh, we'll see. This is why I come out here and do this. It is just awesome. No matter what's your age, you're missing out if you're not out walking through the woods. Do you hear that? Neither do I. And that's the best thing about it. No people, no cars, no airplanes. But I hear birds. I hear that stream running down below. I don't know how well you can see it. It looks like the trail picks up on the other side. Uh, hopefully there's a, an easy crossing. There's a, tr a fallen tree down there that I might cross over on. We'll just have to see. This is beautiful, guys.
And here's where it gets crossed, looks like. Somewhere down here. This is kind of unique. I'm not sure what kind of tree this is. Maybe an old uh, birch tree is what it looks like. It's got a huge hole through the center of it. And one coming out the other side at the top. Pretty cool. Well, I ended up adding a few rocks to the rock bridge that other hikers had built over time, I guess, before it gets washed away again. But yeah, managed to uh, make it across that. Feet dry, that is about, doesn't look very deep from this perspective, but that is about two feet deep off of those rocks. Uh, look for a better crossing upstream, as well as a better crossing downstream. Even that wide area down there, typically when you have wide areas, the water is usually shallower. But to the far right here, that water is about four feet deep uh, down there. So anyway, this was cool. No uh, crossing shoes in the King Targis, or Tarhigi, I can't remember how you say it. Uh, did great. Uh, no water inside the boot. All good. Looks like this is what my friend was talking about. He said stop and have lunch at the silos. What these things are doing out here in the middle of nowhere, I have no idea. Unless they're old enough that this forest has had time to regrow around them. Pretty wild. Made out of concrete, it looks like. Let's check it out. Looks like we also have the remnants of an old wall over here as well. Interesting. Right, it goes even farther down. We'll have to check this out. Let's see what we can see inside here. Ah, nasty. Water. Hello? And an empty top. I wonder what this once was. Let's get some water heating with the old fancy feast stove here. And we have ignition. Sometimes it's in a, when it's a little cool, it's hard for these alcohol stoves to light. You get a little windscreen around it. And we are cooking up some water, guys. Uh, heat up some water and have some lunch here. Uh, by the way, I don't know if I've already said it, but that is a fancy feast stove from Zelf Stove Works. Uh, it's about $17. Weighs about a half an ounce. Uh, it's an alcohol stove. It comes with a built-in pot stand, so you don't need to carry a separate pot stand. Just set your pot right on top there. And it is a wicking type of alcohol stove. Right at the edge is a wick, so you just pour the alcohol in. Uh, in my case, about half an ounce to three quarters of an ounce to heat up. About eight, in eight ounces of water today. And you just light the wick and you're good to go. Well, this is going to be lunch today. I think I'll have breakfast for lunch. Um, uh, the Mountain House breakfast skillet is pretty tasty, actually. Uh, and it has 17 grams of protein, which is more than some of their dinner meals. Along with that, with a little uh, instant coffee and a little mini moo creamer there. Yep, I told you I was backpacking in luxury. Carry the extra weight of a mini moo, of all things. 
I think I'm gonna have the Mountain House breakfast skillet for lunch. Uh, but it's actually pretty tasty. I've had these before. Uh, and it has 17 grams of protein, uh, which is good. And has and that's actually more than some of their dinner meals. Along with that, I'll have some instant coffee and a mini moo creamer. I told you this was backpacking and uh, luxury, carrying some extra weight uh, for like a luxury backpacking trip. It's where you have some of the comforts at home along. So I'm testing weight on everything today. Uh, so far I've done about three miles. There's only five miles to this trail and I have about two hours and 45 minutes before I have to be out of this uh, forest. So plenty of time for lunch. Well, that was a great lunch. A uh, nice break to stop. Uh, looks like I've got a couple miles left to go. Uh, right now I'm done off the ridge in the valley. Let me see if you guys can see the stream. Kind of following this stream down through the valley. Keep crisscrossing it. So far I've managed to have dry feet. But the trip's not over yet. A couple more miles and uh, looks like I'll have to cross it several more times. But this has been an awesome day, guys. Just out in the woods. Playing in the mud, eating lunch, relaxing with wildlife, nature. There's nobody out here. Nobody. I haven't seen a soul since I left the parking lot. It's been great. Beautiful. Yep. The trail is here and it continues through the swamp, the marshy area, and picks up on the other side. Like I said, we have had so much rain here, everything is flooded. Uh, the trail has been a great time today. But there have been a couple close calls, especially on the big downhills coming off the ridges uh, with the leaves wet against the mud. Uh, it's a good thing I brought the trekking poles today because they sure came in handy. Now to find a way around this. No problem. I'm going to have to pick up the pace a little bit uh, because I took too long with lunch. I just really had a great time just chilling out and relaxing and enjoying the peace and quiet and the sounds of nature. Time to pick up the pace, uh, so there may, may or may not be much video past this point. Uh, I'll get back to you hopefully soon. Bye guys. Well, uh, Fort Knox, Kentucky is not far from here, so I've had the sound of silence interrupted by an army Blackhawk, but that's okay. Uh, I remember earlier when I was kind of poking fun at all of the um, trail markers that they had at the beginning of the trail. They have a lot of people come down here from the Louisville area and probably up from Elizabethtown also. It's a smaller town south of Louisville. Uh, but most of those people don't get out much in the woods and will probably get lost quite easily. Uh, the farther I've gotten into this trail, uh, the fewer markers I have seen. Now I did come to an area just now where I questioned, you know, I had to look around and find the trail. They have it marked. Uh, but if they didn't, it would be kind of difficult to follow the tra uh, to rather to find the trail. I wanted to keep going straight. Naturally, that was the direction I would go, continue to follow the valley. But if you'll notice, they have some nice arrow markers there. The trail is actually up the hill. Uh, you see the two markers on the tree. But if you look down at this natural drainage, it kind of wipes out any presence of the trail. So, um, anyway, back to hiking. That's where I just came from, where I mentioned uh, most people would probably keep going straight. 
because it looks like a natural trail down there. I'll tell you what, that is one steep climb. I don't know if you can appreciate it from this camera angle, but uh, I've got to give it to these new boots, the Keen Targhees or Targhee, however you say it, number two. The sole on these things provided excellent traction coming up that. I mean, that is nothing but mud. And I only slipped once, and that is pretty steep. So hats off to Keen Boots. I'll, uh, when these wear out, I'll buy some more for sure. Well, I found out where Br'er Rabbit lives. If it's anywhere, it's got to be here. There's nothing but thorns. Some parts of the trail here, I'm actually having to hold my trekking poles out to my sides and a little bit in front just to make a path so I don't get all ripped up from the thorns. But yeah, I'm thinking if Br'er Rabbit's here, anywhere he's here. Pretty wild area. Once again, I'm on top of a ridge. And this whole ridge is filled with briars. Well, I'm not sure what kind of berries those are. Like, uh... Don't know if I can identify that later. I'll post it in the uh, below the video in the description. Beautiful area down here in this valley. Another stream coming down off the ridge. I love the sound of a natural stream like this. It's so relaxing. Well, the hike is over. Just wanted to show you the bottom of these Keen Targi boots here, Targi. I'll figure out the name before I do another video, trust me but I was in mud all day.